Yeah, today I want to talk about a couple of topics that I'm working on and that particularly interest me. So the first is my research about malware. So I'm talking about those little nasty programs that get on your computer either through downloads, emails, or you know, other operations like that, and do, um, take control of your computer and do various unpleasant things, such as, for example, stealing your banking credentials or um, encrypting your files and then asking for cash in order to decrypt them. So now you may be surprised that I'm working on this because if you look at those advertisements from antivirus companies, they pretty much tell you that those problems have been solved. Um, and you may think that then they are solved. But the reality is that um, the hard truth is that detecting and stopping malware is a hard problem. We've been working on it for 30 years and we still have no reliable solution inside. Uh, so just to give you an example, just last year the city of Atlanta suffered a particularly nasty ransomware infection that left the city administration unable to provide basic services to citizens. Uh, and taking care and curing and fixing this ransomware infection costed over 2.6 million of dollars. So in many ways this is not surprising because oftentimes we say that the security is an arm race between the good guys and the bad guys. So every time the good guys or us come up with a robust defense against a particular class of malware, then the bad guys come, come up with a strategy to break it. So now, in recent years, there have been a lot of talk of applying machine learning to malware detection. And on one hand, this is a great development. On the other hand, though, application of machine learning to this particular problem have limitations that we have only recently begun to understand. Uh, so there is a lot of recent, re recent research that shows that uh, machine learning for malware detection can be broken, by which means that um, it's possible to craft malicious programs that look like benign to a machine learning detection algorithm. Um, so some of my current research investigates the limits of machine learning based classifiers. So how is it possible to generate malware samples that look like benign programs to a detection algorithm? Uh, and of course, the next step, and once we figured out that, once we figure out that, the next step will be to uh, how to inform the design of the, ne the next generation of detection algorithms, so they don't suffer from the same limitations. Um, overall, I think this is a line of work which has potential to benefit many users because malware is one of the most widespread online threats. So understanding what works and what doesn't work in our, when we're trying to detect it and stop it, uh, it's a worthwhile research effort. So the other thing I want to discuss today, it's a different aspect of computer security that I'm currently working on. So this line of work looks at something quite different, which is the security of cloud backends. So as you probably know, a lot of the applications that you have on your phone don't necessarily end at your phone. Many of those, those applications transmit data, including personal information, uh, to large remote data centers, which we usually call clouds. Uh, so servers in those data centers then store your data, process them, and send results back to the apps. So now the application that runs under the hood in those remote data centers, uh, so the back end of your phone app, um, can really get quite complex. And you know, they con may consist of uh, many different uh, components and services that need to play nice together in order for the whole application to work. So now you may be wondering why this is relevant or inter interesting from a security point of view. So the reason is that humans, when are confronted with designing and operating complex industrial machinery, such as those cloud backends, tend to make uh, various types of mistakes, uh, design mistakes, operational mistakes, and the such. This means that many of those cloud applications will, have, will suffer from mistakes in their design, or even if they're designed correctly, will suffer from mistakes in their configuration or the way they are operated. In turn, those formal mistakes then can lead to serious security issues. Um, Data leaks are one of the most common. Just like this June, Wired Magazine has this article about a marketing firm which leaked the data for, I don't know, many millions of uh, adult Americans and businesses. Um, and the reason of the leak was simply that some, uh, w one component of this application was a database system, and this was left open to the internet. So this is a simple e example, but there are, you know, things can really get more complicated. But the root of these, those type of issues is that, is that the sheer complexity of the system is just too much to manually ensure that there are no defects. So luckily we have a set of techniques uh, that are usually called formal verification that allow to verify abstract version of a software system, checking if it matches a set of desired properties. 
So however, the problem with verification is, is that typically those techniques are expensive in terms of computation and they're quite complicated for users because they require reasoning about systems in terms of logical formulas. Uh, the research challenge here is then on one hand how to, fig uh, to figure out how to perform verification efficiently on the system and on the other hand how to provide user-friendly interfaces and languages that even people not skilled with formal verification can use. I also think, I think also this research is quite interesting because if you think about it, security issues in the design of cloud applications are hard to catch before they are exploited and once they are exploited can lead to service disruption and pri privacy leaks for millions. So the more we can do for, to solve those problems, the better. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. <laughs>